Seven Board of Education meeting for February 23rd, 2015. Can I please have a roll call vote, Madam Clerk? Dr. Lamb? Mr. Borkowski? Here. Mr. Sheehan? Here. Mrs. Stevenson? Here. Mr. Anderson? Present. Mrs. Stevenson? Here. Mr. Goldberg? Here. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our early start.
takeaways from the conference. Way too much time on testing and time spent on testing, both of those things. It is wide and deep. The agreement on that, and it's all across the nation and all across the capital. What I never thought I would hear about the SEA is that it is, quote, moving at lightning speed, unquote. There is not expected to be a veto if they pass the bill, if both chambers pass the bill. Uh, also, a compliment to the National School Board Association. What a great job they have done of explaining the problems with testing. So, the annual testing of students and in the, the, the measure published and punished, that's been the pattern uh, since the child left behind came in. In addition, the non research based sanctions, sanctions that included if you're not meeting proficiency, that you need to fire the principal, you need to convert to a charter school. In a very data driven, driven industry, a very fact based, evidence based industry, to have sanctions 
district's belief statements, um, and this is a synopsis, or uh, as, it, as it refers to elementary language language um, programming, commitment to maintaining instruction to students at an early age, access to all children, focused on developing language proficiency, instruction should be differentiated, it should be spoken in the language, and cultural awareness and functional language skills should be focused. The goals of the program include to develop language proficiency. 
Next is uh, Board Finance and Operations Committee. Rick Operations and Finance Committee.
attended the NQT executive meeting on February 11th. At that meeting, there was my role on the SSE and the SSE legislation of District 67. both districts with just a short hands-on training for adults who are interested in participating. Um, one question that has come up that I want to make sure you're aware of is there's a question about our, our students' information um, kind of being used and sent to the vendor so that the vendor could upload it onto the app and all that. So basically, um, there are companies, and in this case, it's a company named Clever. They are a company that works with schools and outside vendors to be the go-between for um, transmitting student information in the most secure way possible. So if there are any concerns about that, we feel assured and our technology experts across both districts feel very comfortable um, with this setup, knowing that um, the Crisis Go app would be basically receiving information directly from PowerSchool, but using a magic company in the middle that makes sure all the data is transmitted securely. Not really magic, but. 
Is, is magic a technical term? or is Yes, there, very yeah. highly technical, highly technical, capital M. <laughs> so where is the data then stored? I mean, I understand as it moves, I'm assuming it's encrypted, but it's got to be stored somewhere. I believe it, it's, it's always stored in PowerSchool. That's our student information system for the district. But when the app is activated, it needs to immediately access information from PowerSchool. That's where it's, it's getting its information from. It's not like a separate collection of student data. So that's our student information system. In the same way that we transmit data from PowerSchool to the state information system um, is the same way that this would go from PowerSchool to the Crisis Go app. Did I do okay on it? Okay. <laughs> So it's it's not like a it's not like we're giving separate sets of information. It's just taking PowerSchool, which is emergency contact information, uh, phone numbers, and up to the minute attendance information, which at the high school in particular is very helpful. But even at the middle school, when you have kids in and out more throughout the day, um, to be able to know exactly who was in class at the time of a crisis is is very important. And how long has this app been used? Do we know? not new. I don't have the exact answer. I can find out though. L Lauren, I would be helped if you could give an example, like the last time something happened in our district that this app would have been used for and how it would have helped things. So like Beth's comment is an important comment. The transfer of information is never secure, right? If, DO if the Department of Defense can get hacked, my guess is uh, whatever you called could get hacked, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't want to do this if it's really not going to give us any benefit, plus it costs four grand a year. So I think it would be helpful to have a, s sure. a couple good examples of exactly how this app Sure, works. a couple of incidents come to mind. One is, I, I think it was this past fall, we had severe weather, um, and particularly Sheridan was, was in danger just given the area there with the trees. It was a very short amount of time with really severe storms. So you have adults that are not by their computer to get email. They could have gotten an instant message pushed out from the district, um, including the principal who might not always be at email, giving directions about whether we were going to hold students inside, um, hold buses for transportation, things like that. Um, another example would be, I think it was also this year, uh, where we had um, a suspicious item outside of Deer Path. Um, again, we could push information out to all adults in all five schools, potentially even six schools, because we know that the kids are doing that anyway for us, right? So the minute they hear something, the minute they see any type of activity, so basically this gives us a chance to get out and give the message before the kids give the message for us to the adults in the building, which the kids are with them and getting their their response from them. So we could have pushed out information saying this is being investigated. We do not believe this has any immediate harm. Um, we're again we're delaying the end of school until such and such a time so right now we're relying on uh, constant contact to do that um, which takes a little bit longer and also we're relying on email um, which again all adults are not always necessarily ready to access their email as they would a text message I thought um, so at the APT exec meeting uh, our SRO officer was there and he actually gave a good example that you touched on with the suspicious package at Deer Path. I guess as he described it, there were classes or groups of kids and adults stuck in a closet in the cafeteria area um, for some period of time with no knowledge of actually what was going on. And, and I guess it was a pretty anxious time for them and they had no information. With this app, as I understood it, they could have pushed out the information to the adults that were in the closet and given them some update so they weren't in the closet for an hour with absolutely no information whatsoever. That was the example he gave. So, so do we envision requiring all staff to download this app? No, because we don't require, it's their personal phone. We don't provide a district phone. So it's an additional layer of, of security. It's not a guarantee because, again, we can't we can't mandate that they put it on their phone. We do anticipate that almost all staff would want to, but since it's their personal phone, we couldn't do that. Is this a rolling one-year contract? 
yeah. meaning we can cancel it after yeah. any year if yeah. it's not working. So it right. starts it it starts as soon as we enact it, and then it goes for one one full calendar year after that. But correct, we can we can do it for a year, and if we feel that the benefits are not outweighing the cost, although the cost is I think reasonable, it's not exorbitant um, shared across the districts, but we could certainly reevaluate at that time. Other questions or comments from board members? Hearing none, could I have a uh, motion to approve the uh, Crisis Go app as presented? I guess I do have a question. Are we, are we voting on it at this level? I wasn't quite clear. It is oh. an action item. We're spending money, I think we have to vote on it. It's because it's not a one-time item, is that right? Because it's under the threshold for the dollar amount, right? It's under the threshold, but it's a good practice on contracts to bring them before the board. Probably the only exception to that might be software contracts, the licensing. You know, we don't typically this. bring that. But yes. And according to the budget, will 67 just pay half? It is going to be divided by students. I give you your motion. And by students. I'll second it. I have a second. Could I have a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk? Mr. Borkowski, Mr. Borkowski uh, made the motion, and Mr. Schuler seconded it. Um, Mr. Borkowski? Aye. Mr. Schuler? Aye. Mrs. Clemenson? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Dr. Lemke? Aye. Mr. Folker? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Motion carries. Excuse me. The, the next item on the agenda is approval of the Life Touch renewal. Mr. Simic. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I recommend approving the Life Touch renewal as presented. Questions or comments from board members? You may have a motion to approve the Life Touch renewal. So moved. So, <coughs> may I have a second? Sec second. Roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Dr. Lemke? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Folker? Aye. Mr. Borkowski? Aye. Mr. Schuler? Aye. Mrs. Clemenson? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the next item on the agenda are human resources items. Mr. Um, any comment, Mr. Simic? Yes, I, there is one uh, thing that is that uh, bears noting here, and that is uh, the it's a happy, sad moment for us. Uh, it, it's one of these things that people say, "Look, be glad that it happened, and it's okay to be sad that it's over." But uh, we have a resignation from Lauren Fagel, our assistant superintendent uh, for curriculum, instruction, technology, assessment, and managing the superintendent. Um, and uh, Mrs. Fagel has been selected uh, for, I would say, a position of a lifetime in uh, the community in which she and her, all of her siblings grew up uh, to be the new principal, the only the fifth principal in the history of the building and the first female principal ever of Glenbrook South High School. And one of the things that uh, my, in my discussions with her, and she knows how supportive I am, of this, uh, but the things that are irreplaceable are the passion and tenacity with which uh, she approaches all of her tasks here. Uh, and, and that is something we will sorely, sorely miss. And at the same time, we know that our friendship circle will grow and expand, and that's a good thing for her and for us. We haven't may, voted on it yet. May I have a motion? <laughs> may I have a motion for approval of the human resources? Are, are there questions or comments from board members? Move to fire her? Oh. <laughs> other questions or comments from board members of a responsible nature? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
May I have a roll call vote, please? Uh, may I have a motion to approve the human resources items? So moved. Second. Second. A roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Borkowski? Aye. Dr. Lemke? Aye. Mrs. Clemenson? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Schuler? Aye. Mr. Folker? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, and congratulations to Mrs. Mrs. Fagel. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, consent agenda items. Are there any uh, items on the agenda which a board member would like removed for further discussion or, or analysis? Yeah, I'd like to request that the wind down agreement be made an action item to discuss. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to remove the approval of the wind down agreement with the City of Lake Forest from the consent agenda? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Roll call vote or? Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Dr. Lemke? Aye. Mrs. Clemenson? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Borkowski? Aye. Mr. Schuler? Aye. Mr. Folker? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, so I think we're going to vote first on the rest of the consent agenda and then we will vote on the, uh, or discuss the uh, wind down agreement. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the remaining items on the consent agenda? So moved. A second. 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 We're all call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Folker? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Schuler? Aye. Mrs. Clemenson? Aye. Mr. Borkowski? Aye. Mr. Lemke? I'm Aye. sorry, Dr. Lemke? And Mr. Anderson? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Okay, the next item agenda is approval of the wind down agreement with the City of Lake Forest. Uh, Mr. Simic? Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I'd like to ask Mr. Albus if he would like to uh, make any introductory comments on this. Some of this will be redundant, but it's more for the people, I guess, in the audience. Um, so I'll recap the cover memo and then offer a couple of comments. In 1994, the city and Lake Forest School District 67 entered into an intergovernmental agreement pertaining to special school-related services arising from new residential subdivisions in the city. The agreement outlined a number of facility financing mechanisms including the sale of land and the establishment of special service districts. The IGA, the Intergovernmental Agreement, expired in July of 2014, and in December of 2014, the City Council terminated the five established SSAs. Now, the SSAs generated some additional tax revenue to offset some debt that the school district took on back in, around the turn of the century. That debt will be paid off in about four years. In taking that action, I was at the city council meeting. The council directed staff to work with the school district to help mitigate the loss of revenue. So we've had a number of meetings over the past several months, and the agreement before you is the result of those meetings. There are basically three compensating actions being proposed. As you might be aware, or as I'm sure you're aware, uh, recently we entered into an agreement with the city to reimburse them for a portion of the student resource officer costs that the district um, benefits from, or the services of. Um, under this agreement, our, our expense related to those services will be delayed for a five-year period. That's about $184,000 offset. The total amount of revenue that we're look, we were losing as a result of the terminated SSAs was about 400000 In addition, we had been talking to the city about splitting the cost of replacing the playground at Everett. And while we had not had a formal agreement proposed, that would have been a recommendation coming to you, and that was about $80,000. The city will absorb that. In addition, the city will help us, through their staff, re-engineer the entrance at Everett on the east side of the building. So if you're familiar with that, Leslie's shaking her head, when buses and cars are, it's just too narrow. Um, so I think this is a good combination for both sides because it's, it's both hard dollars and soft dollars. For example, on the engineering services, that cost is already incurred by the city because they have staff. It's just allocating their time. 
but that certainly is saving us an expenditure we would otherwise have to incur. Um, the saving on the SS, uh, SRO dollars, the city hasn't been being reimbursed, so it's not a direct loss of revenue yet, but it's a cost we would have been absorbing. Um, so I think it's a good balancing act between the two. It certainly helps mitigate uh, what was the action that was taken in December. This was reviewed with legal counsel um, on our side, and it properly closes the IGA. And so for those reasons, we recommend approval. Alan, what percent, um, ignoring net present value, what percent of the lost revenue are we recouping, roughly? Uh, you have to make a couple of assumptions, but I would say roughly 75 percent. Yeah. Other questions or comments from board members? Yeah, I just want, I, I asked that this be pulled out of the consent agenda for two reasons. One, I wanted to make sure that the public was at least aware of the agreement we were entering into. I think the, the idea of transparency, we want to make sure that these types of contracts and agreements are discussed and presented um, in, in the light of day. But at the same time, I also wanted to recognize Alan and the city for working together to come up with a workable solution. Um, I think you know, felt a little, little bit blindsided by the, the elimination of the SSAs. And this is an excellent uh, way of working together to help mitigate that lost revenue in a way that really benefits both parties. So thank you, Alan, yeah. for I, I taking the lead in that. And thanks, Bob Kiley, quickly, as well. Very quickly. I'm surprised it happened that fast. <laughs> excellent. Thank you, Jeff. That was well said. Uh, other questions or comments from board members? Hearing none. Uh, could I have a motion for approval of the wind-down agreement with the City of Lake Forest? So moved. Second. Second. A roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Schuler. Aye. Mr. Folker. Aye. Mrs. Clemenson. Aye. Mrs. Fisher. Aye. Dr. Lemke. Aye. Mr. Borkowski. Aye. Mr. Anderson. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is FOIA requests. There are no FOIA requests uh, this month. Announcements. Thursday, February 26th is a parent teacher conferences, our parent teacher conferences from 1 to 4 p.m., half day for students. Friday, February 27th, parent teacher conferences, no student attendance. Tuesday, March 24th, Board of Education meeting, that's us, 7 p.m., right here. May I have a motion to adjourn? Mm. I may have a motion to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Second. May I have a second? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Mrs. Clemenson? Aye. Dr. Lemke? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Folker? Aye. Mr. Borkowski? Aye. Mr. Schuler? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Motion carries. <laughs>